This video is not sponsored by Dr. Pepper, but I wish it was because I've refrigerated a lot of 12 ounce cans of these various different refrigeration units and I had to drink them afterwards and this is sodium free, calorie free, and sugar free and I would have preferred Dr. Pepper. So, 365 cans a year, I'll put one in every video. Now, these are two commercially purchased refrigeration units. This is a thermoelectric unit. This is a compressor based unit. There's a compressor over on this side over here. This guy over here is my home built DIY prototype thermoelectric cooler with a liquid cooling system. Um, there's a separate video that reviews each of these two and tells you how I built this guy. So comparing them all together, this guy here averages 45 watts of power draw. This guy here, because it uses a compressor, is much more efficient, and this guy takes 20 watts on average. This guy over here has four TEC elements compared to probably one in this guy, um, but it's running two of them in two sets of series, and so it's taking 70 watts total. So this guy takes the most power. It also has the most insulation and the most volume. So this guy over here has a 61 liter external volume. This guy here is pretty tiny, it's 12 liters. This guy over here is 47 liters. Now, this is the C15 unit, which means it has 15 liters of capacity inside. You can buy a unit with a bigger lid that pops up to make it C20, but it's the same unit. Um, this guy here is pretty small. It can hold a six pack, and that's about it. So it only has five liters of interior capacity. And because I have so much thick insulation on this guy, the actual storage space inside is relatively small. It's only 7.8 liters. So it's really just you know, a little bit bigger than this one, almost twice as big as this one, but less than half, the, about half the size of that guy there. Now, this guy and this guy will not actually fit in the space in my van. Um, so either I'm going to have to shrink this guy or build one of these that'll fit in the right space. This guy would fit, but it doesn't get cold enough. So, from a price standpoint, we're looking at $33 shipped. This guy over here, it's normally about $170. I got on a special for $145, so I got a pretty good deal on that one. This guy here, I spent probably about $125 worth of parts plus lots of labor. Now, this guy doesn't get cold enough to actually refrigerate something. The coldest I've ever gotten with it, even in a cool day, um, was about 8.5 degrees centigrade, and you'd like to get below about 5 degrees centigrade for refrigeration. This guy over here, because it has a refrigeration unit, a, a compressor-based refrigerant unit, um, it can get really cold. It can actually freeze things. It'll, it has a, a setting that goes down to negative 20. I've measured as low as negative 12, negative 13 inside of it. So I, I believe this thing it will definitely freeze. It'll probably get close to negative 20 centigrade. This guy over here, the coldest I've ever gotten it is negative 4.5 centigrade. So it will also freeze things due to the large amounts of insulation and the water cooling on the hot side. Um, but it's not going to get you as cold as this guy over here. So this is difference in three hours in my DIY thermoelectric cooler. There is ice in there. It's not completely frozen though. There's definitely probably half the water still. In the Appy Cool, it was three hours, it took less energy, um, and it is completely solid. I don't see any bubbles or anything inside there, so that completely froze that in three hours. For cooling capacity, I put in four 12 ounce cans and turned these guys on to see how they would go. This guy never got it really to refrigeration. Lowest it got was about 8.5 degrees centigrade. It took it somewhere between 12 and 24 hours. I suspect it's probably closer to 18 hours um, overnight. There was a gap in my measurements there. Um, this guy here, when I put four 12 ounce cans in, to get it down to the same temperature, that 8.5 degrees centigrade temperature, took this guy about two and a half hours and took this guy here about four hours. Now, these guys can get colder. So, this guy over here, my DIY solution, um, to get down to about 4.5 degrees centigrade took six hours. This guy here took four hours to get down to that same temperature and then was able to lower it down below that. Now, this one is taking 80 watt hours to go for four hours. 
This guy over here is doing 420 watt hours to go for that same amount of time. Uh, this guy here can't get it that cold, but it takes a lot of power. So if you're running them for a day, this guy takes about a kilowatt, about a thousand watt hours. This guy over here takes 0.48 kilowatts, so about half of that. This guy over here takes about three times what this guy does. Um, it's 1.6 kilowatts. So this guy takes the most power. It can refrigerate. Um, it is a thermoelectric cooler, but it's using water cooler, so it can get a little bit cooler. Um, but this guy here just has the best performance. So for my van, I'm really going to be considering ripping this apart reconfiguring it without breaking any of the cooling toy co coils um, and recreating it in a size that will fit in my van um, because if you can fit a refrigerant based cooler um, efficiency wise is just going to be the best. Now noise wise this guy's the quietest it has a small fan it sounds like a little computer fan um, not at all objectionable. This guy's the noisiest because it has some two big fans I had to run at 12 volts and they're going pretty fast so it kind of whines. Um, it's a continuous noise but it's, it's noisier. This guy's pretty quiet most of the time. The compressor sometimes will rattle. Here the vibration so maybe that compressor is working a little bit harder now. When I push against it the vibration will stop. It might be due to this damage. I push down also the vibration stops. And you'll look at my review for this one. I have a little bit of damage to the side in shipping. It might the rattle might be due to that, or it might just be when this thing flips up to 50 watts and runs the professor the compressor at full um, power, it just starts rattling a little bit. Um, when it's not rattling, it's nice and quiet, just slightly noisier than this guy. Um, when it is rattling, it can be kind of annoying. So I'm not sure if that's just my unit or if they all do that when they're running at high power. Um, but it doesn't do that too frequently, so generally this is pretty acceptable from a noise standpoint. Alright, so that's how my DIY system compares to these two commercially purchased systems. Um, you can look at the other videos for how I built this or reviews of these two guys on their own.